Hey everyone, welcome to Candle Chase. As the whole Otis family was now in deepest depression because they could not find Virginia anywhere else, nowhere in the city, not in the town, not in any area, they were totally shocked and now depressed. When they had finished their dinner, Mr. Otis, in spite of entreaties of Little Duke, ordered them all to bed, saying that nothing more could be done that night and that he would telegraph in the morning to Scotland Yard for some detectives to be sent down immediately. Just as they were passing out of the dining room, midnight began to boom from the clock tower and when the last stroke sounded, they heard a crash of sudden shrill cry. A dreadful peal of thunder shook the house, a strain of unearthly music floating through the air. A panel at the top of the staircase flew back with loud noise and out on the landing, looking very pale and white, with a little casket in her hand, stepped Virginia. In a moment, they had all rushed up to her. Mrs. Otis clasped her passionately in her arms. The Duke smoothed her with violent kisses and the twins executed a wild war dance round the group. Good heavens, child, where you have been? said Mr. Otis, rather angrily, thinking that she had been playing some foolish trick on them. Cecil, Cecil and I have been riding all over the country looking for you, and your mother has been frightened to death. You must never play this practical jokes anymore, Virginia. Accept, accept on the ghost, accept on the ghost, shook the twins as they capered about. My own darling, thank God you are found. You must never leave my side again, murmured Mrs. Otis as she kissed the trembling child and smoothed the tangled gold of her hair. Papa, said Virginia quietly. Been with the ghost. He is dead, and you must come to see him. He had been very wicked, but he was really sorry for all that he had done. And he gave me this box of beautiful jewels before he died. The whole family gazed at her in a mute amazement, but she was quite grave and serious, and turning round. She led them through the opening of the vein coating down a narrow secret corridor. Washington following with the little candle which he had caught up from the table. Finally they came on a great oak tree studded with rusty nails. When Virginia touched it, it swung back to its heavy hinges and they found themselves in a little low room with the valve ceiling and one tiny grated window embedded in the wall was a huge iron ring. The jug had evidently been once filled with water as it was covered inside with green mould. There was nothing on the trencher but a pile of dust. Virginia knelt down beside the skeleton and folding her hands, her little hands together, began to pray silently while the rest of the party looked on in wonder at the terrible tragedy whose secret was now disclosed to them. Hello! suddenly exclaimed one of the two teams, who had been looking out of the window to try and discover in what wing of the house the room was situated. Hello! the old withered almond tree had blossomed. I can see the flowers quite plainly in the moonlight. Oh my god! The old almond tree has blossomed. I can see the flowers quite plainly in the moonlight. God has forgiven him. God has forgiven him, said Virginia gravely. And she rose to her feet and a beautiful light seemed to illuminate her face. Oh, what an angel you are! 
What an angel! cried the young duke, and he put his arm round her neck and kissed her. As after this, the funeral of the Cantwell ghost was properly executed. And now, after the ghost has exited the Cantwell chase, Otis thought that this was the right time to get his daughter Virginia married to the Duke of Cheshire. And as per planned, as per their thought, they both were married. Virginia married to the Duke of Cheshire, who she was dating for a long time now. And as they were married, they both were Duke and Duchess of Cheshire. So the Virginia was Duchess of Cheshire. As the Duke and Duchess, after the honeymoon was over, went down to Cantwell Chase and on the day after their arrival, they walked over in the afternoon to the lonely churchyard by the pine woods. There had been a great deal of difficulty at first about the inscription of Sir Simon's tombstone, Sir Simon, the Cantwell ghost, his tombstones. But finally it had been decided to engrave on it simply with initials of the old gentleman's name and the words from the library window. Duchess had brought with her some lovely roses which she strewed upon the grave. After they had stood by it for some time they strolled into the ruined chancel of the old abbey. There, the Duchess sat down on fallen pillar while her husband lay at her feet smoking a cigarette and looking up at her beautiful eyes. Suddenly, he threw his cigarette away, took hold of her hand and said to her, Virginia, a wife should have no secrets from her husband. I have no secrets from you. You have. He answered smiling, You have never told me what happened to you when you were locked with the ghost. You haven't told me. I, I, I have never told anyone, Cecil, said Virginia gravely. I know that, I know that. But you might tell me. Please don't ask me. Please don't ask me. Cecil, I cannot tell you. Poor Sir Simon. I owe him a great deal. Yes, don't, don't laugh, Cecil. I really do. He made me see what life is and what death signifies. And why love is stronger than both. The Duke rose and kissed his wife lovingly. You can have your secret as long as I have your heart, he murmured. You have always had that, Cecil. You have always had that. And uh, you will tell our children someday, won't you? To that, Virginia blushed. Hey everyone, thank you for listening to the Canterville Ghost. This was the last episode of the Canterville Ghost. I'm Ajay Tambe, the host and producer of the show. Thank you for listening. If you really like the show, if you really love this episode, please do subscribe us on Apple Podcasts, follow us on Spotify, and make sure you place a review on Apple Podcasts. It means a world to me if you place a review or you subscribe or you follow. Thank you for being there. Thank you for listening. Please stay safe and stay tuned.